Okay, Chef Jen, welcome to my home again for our second wine dinner. This one featuring wines from the Barcelona region and the coast. Uh, the Mediterranean. The Mediterranean coast. And so we're really excited to have you here again. Thank you so much for um, getting a virtual wine dinner with us. We're really excited about this one. Um, so we're just going to get started. And how do you start every party? Bubbles. Okay, good. Bye. So Bye. bubbles. Okay, so. Jen, and by the way, I'm Chef Jen, Jen Alderton from Olay, mm -hmm. and my business partner, Beth Gruich, Hi, and this handsome guy behind, Tim, he's our culinary director, so this is the family here in the home, uh, and of course, my dogs, he really knows the dogs, okay. So, we are going to open some champagne and start off with an oyster, and we have some uh, Pickering Passage oysters uh, from Washington, and when you guys get them at home, uh, and if you're new to the wine dinners and didn't do them last time, I just want to mention uh, real quick, we have a color-coded system. You're going to get some documents and pieces of paper about the wine and also some at-home instructions. And you're going to see all the food for each course is color-coded with dots. And you'll get a little checklist to be able to see that you know, each component for each dish. So have your food arranged by the dots. Um, and then also you want to think, when you're watching the video, perhaps you want to watch the video first and then have dinner next, you know, again. So that might be great. Because um, you might want to make the food and enjoy the course and pause the video. You know, make the next course, pause the video. So those are just some fun tips that we thought about last time uh, to talk about. So I also uh, have turned my oven on right now, preheated my oven. Um, a couple minor things like that. So I will let Jen talk about the champagne and then we'll talk about this oyster that goes with it for our little amuse bouche. Sounds good. Well, hey everybody, thanks for joining us. Hope you're having, getting ready for a fun evening at home. We're gonna start with bubbles because bubbles are the best way to start. So without further ado, be very careful when you're opening these. Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> this is Barcino C3, which is a special wine that we do in partnership with the Crafty Concepts Restaurant Group which Absolutely. is you beautiful ladies. So it's a wine from um, Penedès, which is in the Mediterranean coast of Spain, not far from Barcelona, just uphill and slightly north of Barcelona. Uh, sparkling wine from Spain is called cava, but in order to be called cava, it has to be made the exact same way as champagne from France. So that means that you make the wine and then you cause a second fermentation to happen in champagne method, also used in cava, that happens inside of a closed bottle. So the fermentation creates um, alcohol, it also creates CO2, and if the bottle's closed, then those bubbles have to dissolve back into the wine. And that's where you get the sparkling element. It's a little bit more of a complex process um, than some of the other methods of making sparkling wine, and so it's considered to be one of the signs of a high quality wine. So method champenoise, exactly Method the same. champenoise. And mm -hmm. so do they do a dosage? There's a little bit of a dosage at the, at the finish. So there's, okay. you make the wine and then you add yeast and a thing called liqueur d'expedition, mm -hmm. which makes the fermentation start again. It's just yeast and a little bit of food. And then you close it off and let the fermentation happen. And then after fermentation, you knock the cap off wine sort of shoots out and then you add back in a top off because it has to be sold in the bottle it's fermented in. Mm -hmm. So you top it back off with some of the, some wine from another bottle that you've opened and a little bit of dosage, which is a sweetness. Often it's an unfermented grape juice mm -hmm. before it's been made right. into wine. So it still has a little sugar to give some nice balance to the flavor profile. So then we have cava, we have sparkling wine from Spain, Method Champenois, like made especially for C3. And so what, grapes, C3. what grapes are these? Oh, good question. Yeah. These are three <laughs> traditional cava grapes. They're called Macabeo, Parallada, and Zarello. Okay, Macabeo, Parallada. Those are fun to say. They are. Okay. I think this wine is super fun, and that's why we wanted to put the Crafted Concepts um, name on it to really kind of promote that within our restaurants because I think a really affordable glass of cava is just absolutely delicious and something you can drink daily. Exactly. Why not? Yeah. Why not? <laughs> and the simplicity of this dish, if you're wondering why at home you got lentils, they're literally just to hold the shell in place. That way the shell can sit on something and it doesn't tip over. We shuck these oysters the morning of, uh, right before you pick up this, we're gonna put the oyster in the shell. And then we have a really interesting little shiso and cucumber mignonette. It's gonna go on top. And and that is as easy as that dish is at home for you guys to put together. 
And ladies, I know, as always, if you'd like one, now you don't have to have one, because I know we're going to go through this thing. So if you'd like to enjoy one with the caviar, please Are do. Are going to have one? Go right ahead. I love one. <laughs> <laughs> I got to taste these earlier, and they're fantastic. The brightness of the shiso, mm. they're delicious. They're yeah. so good together. Yeah. The shiso has a really nice little sweetness to it, too. Yeah. Which goes well with the saltiness of the oyster, and it's so creamy. Fantastic. So those flavors are all perfect for kava. Really nice. All right, all right. So I'm gonna get a couple things out for our next dish. And um, our next dish is, oops, dropping things, is a lomi lomi. Thanks, Timmy. Um, and you have a bunch of sure. <laughs> little components. We have diced cucumbers that we mix with Fresno chilies. We have a little yuzu and olive oil. Um, this is for a kake. This is a little Japanese blend of seaweed and sesame and all kinds of good stuff. Micro cilantro, a little cryovacked avocado, which I think is adorable. <laughs> and we have some cucumber sheets. Uh, Timmy, can I get a little bowl and the salmon? The salmon's in the fridge. So, what um, this dish is going to be pretty easy to, to do as well. Um, inside your little cryovac bag, you have sheets of cucumber that are layered in wax paper. And we are gonna, thank you Tim, you can take that out. And we're gonna lay these sheets out. This is gonna be like a sushi roll. So this is gonna be really fun. You're gonna roll this just like a sushi roll. All right, European cucumber has been laid out. We have some beautiful salmon, sustainable salmon we're gonna put in our bowl. And I've given you a little squirt bottle of kosho aioli. And yuzu kosho is a fermented type of yuzu. So there's a good amount of saltness. We're not gonna need to salt this fish more than what the ingredients you have here. So that'll be really nice. Um, I like to dice up the avocado is one of my first things. Chester likes avocado too. So he's kind of wondering if he's gonna get avocado like he does every morning for breakfast, but I'm gonna say no. <laughs> Okay, so dice up your avocado, put it in the bowl with your salmon. And then we have our cucumber and Fresno. And the Fresno chilies do have a little heat, but I think in the ratio that they're in here, it'll just add a nice little bit of, you know, brightness and not really um, too hot. So in this guy, this is yuzu and extra virgin olive oil. We're gonna mix this on top of the salmon. And then about a teaspoon. So. You, we gave you more aioli than you need, but you're gonna put about a teaspoon in here and then mix this guy up, okay? And this can sit, you wanna mix this up and put it back in the fridge like this. This can sit for a little bit. Um, it should be fine. I wouldn't do more than like a half hour or so. All right, and then now I wanna show you guys how we're gonna roll these, so make sure. This is in the way, so there's two of you at home. We're gonna split this in two. I know there are a couple single people, so um, come on. We're gonna put this at the top part of my cucumber. Let me move that bowl, get that out of the way of the shot. Okay, so the important thing here, I have this at the top part. I'm gonna use the paper and I'm gonna roll this and tuck it with my hand. My hands are gonna kind of tuck this in nice and tight. And then as I'm starting to roll over, I'm gonna pull the paper back and just the cucumber, and I'm gonna roll that around. So that is our little, nice little roll. And do this one more time, even though I think you ladies are just gonna have probably a little bit of one. You make this look so easy. <laughs> well, but we, <laughs> we made it, so at home. <laughs> and again, you gotta keep it tight, so that's just the trick, it's just, and then if it comes out of the ends, just push it back in. It's not a big deal, you know? Like Julia Child, just go with it, you know? And then, and then a little spatula or, or your knife is another nice way to do this, where I take it off the paper, the spatula. And I'm gonna put one on here. I think this will look really striking on a dark plate. Now, then we can put a little garnish on here. And I like to put a little bit of this for a cake because I love the flavor of it. I'm gonna sprinkle a little bit of this on here. And I'm gonna try to make that look real pretty. 
Then I'm going to take my little squirt bottle and you guys can have some fun and put some garnish on here. So maybe a little dot, maybe a few dots on top. And then we have some cilantro leaves and micro cilantro and then we made a rice cracker. So we're going to make this as simple and you can put the garnish wherever you like. And if you don't like cilantro, there's actually none inside because I do know some people, my mother-in-law has that thing where she really hates cilantro, you know, where people can't, they can't eat it. And then we have this beautiful cracker. This is 100% rice. That's so cool. And then that. we've covered it in the furikake. And this is kind of our garnish here. So Timmy, maybe we get a shot of that, Timmy. And then, so this is going to be our dish. Push that, no, pull it, pull it back a little bit. There we go. So this is our dish, and this is gonna go with a really beautiful wine. I'm gonna step out of the way for a minute and let the two ladies take it from here. So, this looks amazing. I'll just say a quick word about the wine pairing and then we can dive in. Yeah. So I'm really excited to see this um, pairing together. Now, in keeping with the theme, we're still right along the Mediterranean coast, but this first wine comes from a producer called Pignol, and they're in the village of Batea, the zone of Terra Alta, which um, is about an hour and a half drive from Barcelona south along the coast, and then up in the coastal mountains. You two had a chance to drive there so a few beautiful. years back. It's yeah. a stunning drive, and you get to this really quaint little teeny tiny super old village. Oh <laughs> Everything's gosh. in stone and the big cathedral. Anyhow, the Pignol family have been making wine there for four generations and all of their um, specialist bottlings are named after ancestors, some of which are still with us thankfully, but the past generations who were instrumental in founding the winery. So La Via Rufi is named after great-grandfather Rufi and uh, this is La Via Rufi Blanco. Now sometimes with wine dinners you kind of build up to the finale and in a lot of wine dinners I've done this is the finale so I'm wow. so excited to see it as an entry course here but the grape is Garnacha Blanca it's white Grenache this is a grape that originates in Terra Alta so it's indigenous to this area and these are from vineyards that are more than a hundred years old so with wow. um, all things the longer something does something the better it gets at doing the thing um, old vineyards work Smarter, not harder. They create powerful fruit, incredible quality. Uh, there's no agriculture here, so the vines really have to dig deep to get any of their, um, their moisture. And a 100-year-old white Grenache vineyards is really a very special thing. Yeah. So the wine has- This was a beautiful this place. Was, I enjoyed going here so much. Um, this, and I, when I tasted this wine again, I'm like, we oh. have to use this wine. <laughs> This I, have, so I always pick like the most expensive wine, so right. well, <laughs> I was like, oh, fine. we're going to pick the most expensive wine, but we're going to do it. I was so excited <laughs> that you did, though, because it's really uh, special. They only make amazing. 300 cases of this wine for the whole world yeah. every year. That's amazing. So, you know, 3,600 so bottles. So delicious. And we're getting to enjoy one of them here. So I'm thrilled that, that you picked it. I can't wait to taste it with yeah. this. Oh, yeah, it's good. Take better a sip. Better. I know. Ladies are still more. Let me know what you guys think about the pairing. Yeah, I think it's um, really awesome. yeah, I think it's going to be great. Now, how do you recommend I, eating this? You know what? Jen? Actually, you need a knife. <laughs> yeah, yeah you want to dig into that. Yeah, I feel like I could scoop it apart, but it so just might, looks so beautiful. Because you guys are sharing, you can uh -huh. just go right in there. That cucumber is so delicate. But because you guys are sharing, I might take a slice. Sure. And then, you know, the chip. You could put it on the chip, you don't have to, you know, it's just kind of there. Um, and these rice crisps that we make um, are really fun because it's only rice. Uh, so in case you don't want gluten, you know, some people have a little bit of an issue with that. So you don't have to have the gluten. Um, so I think you're going to really enjoy this. We needed something big enough. This wine is substantial for a white. Mm -hmm. And so I really felt like it needed something big enough to go with this. And... Um, this and I hope that the kosher doesn't fight it. I don't think it will. I think we're going to find that it, it's going to go well together. But this is a white that could go well with a steak. I oh, mean, yeah. Big, big this is a pork chops, yeah. pork chops uh -huh. things like that. Yeah, totally. So what do you think, Jen? I love it. The, the sauce has a little bit of heat to it. Yes. Which is so nice with the fresh cucumber, and I'm such a, um, a fan of, of beautiful salmon like this. 
So all of those textures, gorgeous. a little bit salty, a little bit heat, a little really nice and fresh work so well with so nice. the wine. The wine has quite a lot of texture. So it's got a big palate weight mm -hmm. from the freshness. Really picks that up and kind of plays around with that. it. The wine also has really great acidity and that Try works nicely with mm -hmm. the salmon. Yeah. So as big as this wine is, it's really approachable. And it can be oh, just you know, to drink so, on your own, which is great. Yeah, and then they get so big. Yeah, for people at home, I wanna I wanna um, comment on the fact that this wine does have some exposure to oak. It actually spends seven months in French oak, which is quite a lot of time. Mm -hmm. But it isn't a oaky flavored wine. They're very very old bottles. Mm -hmm. or old, very old barrels have been used quite a lot, and it um, helps round and soften the wine to spend mm -hmm. that time. But it does not give a toasty oaky. So mm -hmm. this is a really interesting wine to try for someone who um, is familiar with big wines being mm -hmm. oaky chardonnays for example i know which i hate um, <laughs> <laughs> i think there's a time and a place they're mm -hmm. beautiful there can be a lot of beautiful wines and and then maybe some that aren't my favorite but this is a great big white wine that doesn't have the oak flavor right. it has texture and weight all by itself mm -hmm. with acid to balance it out yeah i think generally like a, a french merceau is about as oaky as i ever want to get mm. it's about as Ooh. oaky as i go this is great yeah yeah. This is delicious. Good. What do you guys? Very fun flavors. Like kind of umami. Yeah. Again, I love it. Sweet. Almost just, is it a, what's the sprinkles? Is it a seaweed? It's called furikake, yeah. Okay. Yeah, a little seaweed, little sesame. Mm -hmm. But it does have a little bit of, of sweetness to it. So. Mm -hmm. It tastes fun with the wine, though. Yeah. It's it great. It changes the element of the wine. And okay. I will say, yeah. the, the whole dish really comes together in a different way with the crispy and yeah. the umami. Yeah. So try to taste them all together and exactly. all don't do what we did. Yeah, they're all fantastic if you dissect and try individual bits yeah. too, but try it all together. There's a reason why my cookbook is called The Perfect Bite, okay people? You gotta make the perfect bite, all right? That's really great. The perfect bite with all, all right. of the right elements. I'm all having right. having another bite. Well, yeah, yeah have another bite, bite and then, mm -hmm. but we'll look at the cutting board while they're chatting. And we made uh, these beautiful raviolis that, can you see them in the shot? <coughs> the ravioli on the cutting board? Okay, I just wasn't sure if they were visible. Um, so, if you can see, they're square. Um, there we go. Perfect. So, we have these... <laughs> my, my dog's barking. Sorry, guys. Um, so, we have these ravioli laid out, and we, we make them from hand. When you get them at home, they're going to be they have some semolina on them. I like to dust the excess semolina off them. I think that's nice. If, if not, it can get all gummy. So, that's a nice trick. I, you also have a pot of boiling water on the stove. So, we have water boiling right here. And you don't need a giant pot. You're only making a few ravioli, so you don't need to get your big old thing out. I'm gonna get a skimmer, pardon me. Mm -hmm. okay, those are gorgeous. And what we're gonna do first is we have the guanciale vinaigrette, and I'll talk about guanciale in a second, but I'm gonna ask Tim to put this in the microwave. Actually, we can put it in a pan and warm it, but there's no big deal. Just put it in the microwave is another great way to already warm this vinaigrette. So maybe two minutes. Yeah. So guanciale is a pork jowl. Mm -hmm. And this is from La Quercia in Iowa. And La Quercia is a domestic producer of prosciutto um, ham that uh, in the style of Italian ham or Spanish jamon. Um, and they're an excellent domestic producer of all these types of cured meats. Really good. They have high quality Berkshire animals. They do a great job. I really love that for a domestic product. Sorry. <laughs> I keep forgetting to look in the right place, but that's okay. Talk to the rabbit. Okay, <laughs> okay so these raviolis are filled with it. So we took corn and we juiced it. We put it in our juicer. And then we put that in the stove and the natural corn starch thickens it up. Wow. So then, cool. and then we, so we just cook that and put a little bit of cream cheese in it and a little salt and it's just lovely. And so that's all this is. And the guanciale vinaigrette has the pork chowl, um, fresh corn, uh, uh, local Colorado oleta corn, uh, and shallots, and a little verjou, which is that white unfermented wine that I love so much. Oh. So we're gonna simply put these guys in our boiling water and that filling will turn to liquid. So we have gelatin in here now is why it's sitting up so high, but it will turn to liquid. And we have the warm vinaigrette and then we're just gonna garnish it very simply with the dill, the parsley, and corn shoots. Oh, love those. Yeah. They taste, here, Jen, you wanna try one on its own? I've never had one. Yeah, if you wanna try it on its own. It's like an itty bitty corn yeah. yeah, exactly. 
They're super fun. Now, usually with pasta, I would have you putting it in some sort of sauce. Now, the guanciale vinaigrette oh. and the inside of the ravioli kind of becomes the sauce. So we don't need any extra sauce to put on this, which may sound kind of odd. So, um, as soon as these come to a simmer, we're gonna not quite there. So you want to pinch the edges of the ravioli and make sure they're just just barely cooked through, not soft al dente. So you just want to make sure they're barely cooked through. And Timmy, if that is hot, then that's boiling. totally fine. That's okay. Hot. <laughs> that's boiling. Oh and smell? Do you smell the porky? Mm -hmm. Wow, do you that is smell hot. that? That smells mm -hmm. so good. Oh Sorry, I love Chester how porky that is. Chester <laughs> also <laughs> loves it. <laughs> okay. All right. So then we're going to scoop these out gently and make sure that, um, so before you put them in your serving bowl, if you need to put them on a towel to get the excess water, if you can, but I, you could just skim them well. And I think they just oh. need another minute. How do you know when they're done? I pinch the side. Okay. And if the pasta... You know, you could like take a pinch off of it if it's white sure. inside, if it's not cooked. Right. You can, but um, I just pinch the side, it feels just like just tender, then it, you know, just barely tender, it's good. <coughs> These, because the filling is um, liquid, you do have to be careful. You do have to use a skimmer, be delicate with them getting them out. And um, and I forget which wine goes with this next one, you guys. This one here. We have another oh. white Grenache. Actually, okay. let me make room for this. We have another white Grenache. <laughs> from the same producer so it's um, a fun oh, opportunity to yeah, see side, side by side, side. this That's is sort yeah. of you know the the big sister little sister yeah. or great grandmother and you know young yeah. oh yeah young professional so this is um, Pignol again <laughs> seller Pignol and this is called Portal Blanco Portal you'll see on the front label there's a little keyhole and um, the the mother of the winemaker is very, <coughs> devoted, very devoted to the local patron saint of Batea, which is Nuestra Señora del Portal. So that's why we have Portal as the name here. So white Grenache again, Terra Alta is the homeland of this grape. It's the origin for the whole world's supply of white Garnacha. So um, very special. Uh, this, this winery does such beautiful work with the grape. But this is a, a younger version, so it spends a little bit of time aging, a couple of months on its leaves, which are the, uh, actually we spoke about leaves a little bit before with the champagne and the traditional method. The leaves are, are simply the, the yeast cells that have finished the fermentation process and then they settle out. After the CO2 stops being produced, the yeast die and they stop making CO2 and they sort of settle to the bottom of the tank. And so that's called Sir Lee on its leaves and some producers will leave the wine in contact with those leaves for a, a period of time and it helps to build in some extra texture and body to the wine, which is something that Garnacha Blanca already has quite a lot of by itself. Yeah. So these are 30 year old vines, it's a nice mature vineyard, three, um, I'm sorry, two months on its leaves, no oak on this, so it'll have more brightness in the finish, but a nice enhanced kind of perhaps a touch of toast, not oaky, um, and that, that full that full body texture to it as well. Okay, well let me I jump think in. It's gonna be great. <laughs> so I, and Ginger is really it's excited about this love. dish. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I'm gonna take the hot vinaigrette and I'm just gonna spoon it all over the ravs to make sure we have no naked <laughs> pasta showing. <laughs> Sorry. And there we go. So we're gonna spoon that vinaigrette all over. Gave you some cookies. Sorry. <laughs> okay. And then the corn shoots are going to go on top. And we can lock her outside if we have to. Corn shoots, you, you just don't see those everywhere. Yeah. They're so fun. And the dill, wait till you taste the dill. You're like, why is there dill on here, I bet? I'm the fascinated. Dill, but the dill with mm, the corn. You never lead us wrong. And yet. the parsley. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and so, again, I just want to place this on here so we can get a little bite of this. And it just looks beautiful. You don't need to, this is a simple dish. We don't need to overcomplicate it. I'll get Tim to take a quick little picture of that. Um, I love, I know there's a lot that went into this and in technique, but wow. when you eat it, it's going to be simple. If the, you know, if that makes sense, like on your palate, I don't know. 
It's not overdone. <laughs> just it, try it. It's, it's so typical of your yeah. food, though. It's not mm -hmm. overdone, but the layers of flavor that come out are so awesome. Well, I hope so. Yeah. And I'm really excited to try this with this wine. So let's wow. go. Okay. So I love that you mentioned simple because these really are simple, beautiful ingredients, but clearly done with such a high level of execution, which is why I love your food. And also I love the fact that people get to take this home, already done to that level of execution. Exactly. And just finish it off with your under your tutelage. Yeah, and getting somebody something really special at home is what we're trying to do. Something you mm -hmm. can't get at home, you know? So now yeah. I have to get the perfect bite. Absolutely. <laughs> Oh, the corn chips are too Garnacha long. Blanca. Garnacha Blanca. You just, you don't see it everywhere. You don't. Why is it so special? It's kind of a sleeper grape. Um, yeah. You do see white Grenache grown in the Rhone right. of France, um, which is beautiful, but of course that region's so famous for its reds. And this grape, I think, um, okay. it's just sort of a well-kept secret. Yeah. I so think we're too. letting the word out a little bit. Um, texturally, I think if anybody, we mentioned before Chardonnay, that's another grape that's got quite a lot of structure and body all by itself. Chardonnay more frequently sees oak and Garnacha Blanca never does. Yeah. Well, not, not, not as often. No, <laughs> certainly it can. It frequently sees oak, but Garnacha Blanca is often seen without oak, I could yeah. say. Um, but it's just this, this wonderful textural sort of weight on the palate. And then the bright acidity as well that really works well. So um, I can't, I can't wait. You guys are, I, I don't know how you guys are doing it. And you see the filling, how it's like mousse, mm -hmm. it's coming oh, out. It's, wow, that's beautiful. Mm -hmm. And you know, herbs wow, with oh that. Oh my gosh. And it's a rich pasta, but the wine is going to really... Mm. I'm going to chase this around. Oh, it's so good. <laughs> 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 it's really fantastic. <laughs> yeah. It really is. Mm. And I love that the, um, the jowl gives just enough of that mm. kind of heavy, meaty... Ooh. And it's great with the wine. Um, meaty note. There's not much here, but the flavor is so yeah. intense and beautiful. Yeah. And then the creaminess of the corn, it really is almost like a custard. Yeah. That's just like what you said. And it's just a natural corn starch. Wow. Thickening that up. What that is, is so there anything delicious. better than just fresh, juicy corn? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And you've captured that flavor here. So the dill is a lot of fun. Really fun. Yeah, right? Mm -hmm. Kind of yeah. brightens it up, takes it in a delicious. slightly herbal note, which the wine has some herbal notes in it too. It really yeah. does. It brings that out. Mm hmm. But, oh, that is fantastic. Yeah, and the, and the wine helps cleanse that palate. Like, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, I think sometimes, um, you know, when Beth and I pair, we try to pair things that are similar, and then sometimes we try to pair, like, it'll be great with it, but let's make it opposite and refreshing or something. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, so there's a couple. I don't know. It's such a rich yeah. flavor in the ravioli. Yeah. And with the jowl mm -hmm. and the vinaigrette. Yeah. So you do like it, something to cleanse the palate is, yeah. is really a nice. Yeah, well, especially nice if you're doing these multiple courses, <laughs> your cow gets tired. So it's really great. It does, yeah. But you yes. can't stop. You have to keep trying the next delicious course and the next delicious course. Wow, well done. This is delicious. Oh, I'm glad you guys like it. And look at that. Wow, super fun. All right, mm. all right. Well, then we'll jump right in to the next dish, and I'll tell you kind of what we're doing here. We have um, a beautiful roulade of pork and a beautiful pork sausage and this is with the green label and we when you get the roulade of pork and the um and your next course those proteins have been cooked virtually all the way for you to start so you just need to warm them so that is something um i do have the oven at 350 and depending on how your oven is at home mine runs a little slow uh, a little under so I put mine to 400 because every time I check it with a, you know, sometimes get a thermometer, check your oven. It seems like mine's always a little under, but it says it's going to be. Um, but I think 400 is a safe temperature as well. So let me just get that. we got to keep it clean. Okay, so you have a few components here. Thank you. And we have this beautiful pork roulade. And Chef Gabe or Chef at Rioja has cut this with precision and brined it. We have this beautiful brine that we put on the pork. Then we made almost like an Italian style pork sausage. You know, there's fennel mm. seed, there's chili flake in there. Fun. There's those kind of flavors. And then this vegetable ragu, chanterelles are in season right now. So we have chanterelles, we have king trumpet mushrooms, we have some olives, some beets, some carrots, and a few kinds of beans. Mm. So first we're gonna start the pork and 
Again, it's been mostly cooked for you, but we'll give it a light little sear on either side and we'll just put it in the oven. And it just needs to get hot inside. And that's really all it needs to happen. Um, but we'll put that in first. And so that'll go on here. My pan is heated. So I've had my cast iron pan heating. So if you don't want to put that in a cold pan, you want to put it in a warm pan. Um, so that's great. And then I'm not going to get a hard sear on this. There's no need to do that. This has been cooked in a whole loin and we've rolled it and we've, uh, Gabe's wrapped it up and then we put it in our combi oven um, that has a combination steam and dry oven. Wow. And we literally like just cook it to the perfect temp the whole way through. So, so it's fully so cooked. Good. Yes, You're just fully cooked, it. exactly. And the mm -hmm. sausage has been cooked, so you don't need to worry about that. Um, wow. So, yeah, it's really nice. Um, wow. And then, so I'm just going to give this a little turn. Again, I don't need to get a hard sear on this. Which makes it so easy for everyone at home. Yeah. It's it would make cooked. me look really good if I was making dinner for all of my friends, right? <laughs> exactly. It's a good way to show <laughs> off. Don't yeah. tell anybody. Right. Like, watch the really video and make dinner. Like, oh, I just whip this up. Oh, <laughs> just, don't, just, they'll have you in their earbuds quickly just, like, okay, tell me what's yeah, it, didn't, yeah. <laughs> it didn't take Chef Jen like three days to make this for you. Okay. Yes, it did. <laughs> There's a wow. lot of love that goes into the, the mise en place, as we call it. Wow. So then while that pork is cooking, um, your ragu of veggies is almost all the way ready, but we have some pork stock and butter that we give you, and we're just going to put those two together. I'm just going to put, um, put my pot back on. I rinsed this out. I could use the same pot. Um, I'm gonna put this on and pork stock and butter. Pork yep. stock and butter. Mm. Mm. Sounds pretty delicious to me. <laughs> yep, it's gonna be good. <laughs> and then the veggies. And we're just gonna make one of these actually, so I'll probably just make one for you ladies. And I have a little bee queen. So we get our beets in and we just keep the beet tops because we think they're delicious. Yellow beets and red beets, you know, you can see mm -hmm. how the variegated leaves look so pretty. We love that. And I just have that in my pot, um, and I'm just going to warm this together. It's going to be super simple. We've already done all the hard work of roasting the beets, right. of roasting the carrots. Um, the mushrooms have been kind of seared off a little bit. So now you're just going to combine flavors. So as soon as this comes up to get, starts to bubble, get hot, just turn it down and let it go kind of slow. Just you know? simmer. Yeah. You don't need to, you're not trying to reduce this. You want a little bit of juice left in that bowl. I'm just going to turn my, my pork on its side, maybe. Those look beautiful. Mm -hmm. And we'll let that go. And then I'll probably take, we have a little extra virgin olive oil, a little mold and salt. I'll take a little bowl to me. We describe. And, and then I'll just dress the bee greens with a little olive oil and a little salt. And... And I forget, what wine does this go with? This goes with a red from the same producer. They're just such a fantastic They are so producer. good. We wow. love them. I actually we didn't did realize it. because we just love that wine. Okay. Well, you will know it. I mean, yeah. we tasted through a whole bunch of different wines from the Mediterranean region all up and down the coast. And the ones you chose happened, to three of them, to, to be from Pignol. That's right. So I wasn't going to talk you out of We're it. We're biased. We could easily do an entire wine dinner focus or even a series just on this oh, winery. They have such beautiful 100%. options. Um, so Ludovicus is the 100% uh, Ludovicus. You can, some people just say Ludo. Okay. But I think it's Ludo, Ludovicus. I don't Ludovicus. know. I, I was I trying know. to do it and I know I was screwed in that. I'm feeling <laughs> fancy tonight. So okay. it's Ludovicus. Uh, this is 100% Grenache. So from those same high mountain vineyards with the Mediterranean influence, but also a continental climate. <clears throat> They're up in that mountain range. Um, this is another uh, wine that the grape that you see quite commonly planted in the Rhone Valley of France. It's a similar heat, and um, this grape ripens so beautifully. So garnacha, as the Spaniards call it, is always going to have really beautiful brambly fruit notes. What it can also do well is to showcase minerality, and especially with a high altitude vineyard site, the mineral and the cold nighttime air from the high altitude bring such a beautiful balance 
to what can be a really delicious, mm -hmm. generous, ripe grape. Yeah. Taro, so, so, I mean, obviously. It means high. Yeah. 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 That's right. Yeah. Yeah. So you'll have all of that nice, rich ripeness of mm -hmm. the garnacha, um, plus this grows in soils of limestone and clay. So you have some really pretty minerals that kind of refresh that I ripe that. fruit. And again, it's cooler nighttime air, so the grapes mm. keep good acidity throughout the ripening season. Well, this is going to be good with that sausage. Yeah, it is. <laughs> I hope so. The it's going to be delicious. And, and the veggies, too, with the mushrooms. And yeah. Like, mm. a lot of, like, yeah. I love that. It's going to be delicious. And again, mm. this drinks really well with, um, by itself, but yeah, it's, really, it it's going to be fun with food. It's a nice guilt-free Tuesday night wine. Yeah. Or oh, guilt free Tuesday night? Tuesday night? Is there a guilty Tuesday night? Because I've Tuesday? been guilty for a long time. Okay? <laughs> why, why is it Tuesday? What about Wednesday? Today's what about Thursday? What about Thursday? Thursday. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, but it's an any night kind of wine. Oh, yeah. A little bit of thyme in oak, so you get the ripeness plus a little bit of that um, kind of toasty, spicy oak flavor as well. Now, we forgot, oh. I do want it because you reminded me, the mm -hmm. second wine you talked about we should open that earlier. After the. Oh. We'll, we'll go back quickly. Okay, yes. yeah. The, the Lavia Rufi, which I mentioned a lot of times in a wine dinner, will kind of build up to this. It's, it can be the grand finale, okay. it's that kind of wine. However, um, that also means that it will really benefit from a little bit of extra time right. with oxygen contact. So if you pull the cork, I mean, you can pull the cork the morning you're going to have this and just let it sit and it'll breathe and breathe and just become so much more generous. I told Jen to try and keep this and taste it tomorrow or taste ah, it the next day. And she just started laughing at me. She said, I Wine doesn't last very long around me. <laughs> well, hold okay. on a minute. But for those of you that have purchased the wines <laughs> for the dinner, and there's maybe two of you, these wines will last <laughs> till tomorrow. So that's the great thing about it. So you can actually pair them up and have a good time. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now, if there's a good shot, or should I put this back on the stove, Matthew? Is this a better shot to see how this looks? Okay, yeah. So um, there's a little bit of juice left. And I'm gonna spoon um, this in here. And I don't need to season this. That pork stock and everything has seasoning on it, so I feel like this is gonna be perfectly seasoned. Now, in this bowl, you see how there's just a little bit of that juice. The pork stock and the butter have kind of glazed the veggies. And it's shiny and perfectly beautiful. And I do think it looks perfectly beautiful. Just Love that. Yes. Already, <laughs> already sexy. Already. It is. Yeah. Wow. It's so it's perfect. perfect. It's like, it's just oh, glistening, it's and, but not, you know, it's still so firm. Yeah. And, mm. Okay, here's the pork. And then what I would do at home is I would just give it, you don't have to cut it at all if cutting it intimidates you. Was it a one but bite? I, well, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but I would cut bit. it one time in half. And then I would just, I'm just going to kiss this just for two seconds. Um, so I think about five or six minutes if your oven's... So, oh, I should back up a little bit. When you bring the food home, the mise en place, and the meat and the pork, I let them sit out for at least an hour to temper a little bit. So if it's ice cold, it'll take longer to cook in your oven and it might dry out on the outside. So, sorry about that, I forgot to back up a little bit. I like to make sure I temper the, the meats like an hour. You just sit them on your counter and that way when you cook it, it's not such a shock to the system. So anyway, so I have that beautiful roulade. We're just gonna put yeah. those pieces right here. Look how gorgeous that. that is. Wow. Well, Chef Gabe at Rioja, he's pretty gorgeous. He's delicious. He, he makes this stuff. Look at this, hold on. Hey, um, Instagram Timmy, we need a picture. <laughs> Before this gets devoured by the beautiful ladies, that is one sexy piece of pork. Trash. Okay. Yeah, and, oh yeah, and then we'll garnish it, Tim, here, I forgot the green. Okay, we'll garnish it with a little bit of green, oh, Timmy. Pretty. Beautiful. And, wow. and there we go. Okay. Did you just toss those in the Just the extra sauce? virgin olive oil mm, and salt. a little bit of malden salt. Simple. Simple yeah. and beautiful. Okay, so that's fantastic. And let's see how it goes with the wine. And this one's my I know friend. I jumped yes. in. <laughs> I, jumped, I know I jumped in in case it. we didn't talk about the wine enough. No, no, I, I think, I mean, with this wine, it, it is meant to be just really wonderfully approachable. It's got great fruit and great earth, so it's a really nice bridge between mm -hmm. more New World styles, American, Napa, yes. those types of wines. Yes. You know, Washington and Oregon have plenty of garnacha, and, but it still feels Spanish. It still has totally. that earthiness. 
So it's a really nice kind of bridge between your, t your typical old world and your typical new world styles. I've seen what people are doing in the new world versus old. Mm -hmm. And really, a lot of them are still paying homage to a little bit more fruit on it. But mm -hmm. yeah, that's, really so, that's what, again, for maybe some people at home, I do think new world Spanish is going to be brighter, more fruit. Old world, right? Maybe a little bit, not dusty, but a little bit. Yeah, I know it's not dusty, but it's definitely a little bit more tannins, and it's not as a fruit bomb on the front, but just like, cool. That kind of rustic, right? Yeah, that's a little mineral. Just for people at yeah. home, maybe. I want, want you to look for the mineral here, yeah. because there's fruit. It's it's a beautiful kind of dark berry compote kind yeah. of fruit that Garnacha has, but there's also, you can you can think about things like limestone and clay, and you realize that there is a bit of earth here, too, which is a nice, a nice contrast. Yeah, you don't get that huge okay. berry bomb, which is amazing. It really balances out. <laughs> wow. Okay. Ladies, gentlemen, ladies, people, ladies and germs. Mm. <laughs> ladies and germs. It's delicious. Okay. I love the taste with our wine. I really like the sausage. Yeah, it's got some nice texture. spice. Mm -hmm. I need to get a fork. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see. There's more spice in there than I thought, and it really brings out kind of some of the characters of the wine. Comes out a little later in the bite. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's gonna take it really does, yeah. The beans. And we love those heirloom beans from Rancho Gordo. They're so good. Mmm. Those are my favorite de gigantes. Oh. Mmm. Wow. I'm one of those. I think this pork is perfect with the wine. Mm, good. And the sauce and the vegetables. I mean, it's it's. The sausage is really the really highlight well. on this, yeah. right? It is. Because so yeah. I do remember when we were tasting this, Beth. I wanted mm -hmm. like fennelly, mm -hmm. chili mm -hmm. sausage. Mm -hmm. So the that's sausage, kind of where your mind went yeah, when you tasted went. the wine. Yeah. That's and then the fun. and then it went to things in season right now with chanterelles and the beets mm -hmm. from Colorado. And I just thought the earthiness might be nice, but also some. You know, and the little, olives, the sweetness, oh, and so good. So that like that last bite was mostly chanterelle, mm -hmm. and they're so gorgeous. Yeah, they're good, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. This type of wine, any earthy wine, garnacha, of course, mm -hmm. with mushrooms is is pretty mm -hmm. much a pair, a match made in heaven. But All this, right. This sausage is something else. Yeah, it's it is. Delicious. Did you you make this in house? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Oh, everything. please, do not oh, send. Sorry. Ask Did it. she just ask that out yeah, there? Right. What do you think? I want to give you credit for your excellent. Oh my gosh! Now, by made in house, it's not made by me. Again, <laughs> Chef Gabe makes it. <laughs> Anyways, really delicious. Wow. Chef Gabe, wow. as you saw in the last yeah, video, have another bite. he's just on the other side of the camera today. So, okay. I'm gonna have another so, bite. Yeah, you guys have another bite. Away. I've yeah. only made you one each, so you have to share. We can share. Okay. okay. So, I, yeah, I don't need money. Now, this next course is with my favorite of the wine of the series. Now. That, ah, uh, your favorite. This Elo Monastrol oh. just blew me away. So, yay! The Elo Monastrol just blew me away. There's some good it's wines pretty, in this lineup, so that's a big statement. impressive. It's really well. If you stop making all these, have your people making all these crappy wines, we get some good wine winers out there. God, what are we doing? No, it's so, so tough to be slumming with you. I Jen. know <laughs> all these oh. terrible ingredients and bad wine and all the bad company we have. Mm. Hope you guys are having fun at home too while you're doing this and drinking some drinking some wine and having some fun. Alright, so this, you know, so good. this mm -hmm. dish is kind of meat and potatoesy, but elevated meat and potatoes. I know mm -hmm. that's you know like with a polish. Yes, a blue. So this is blue. Um we have a beautiful buffalo New York. Ooh. And a bison New York. And now again, we wow. have wow. we have sous me that. We've cooked that, so it's just, I think, perfectly done. Oh my gosh. And now with buffalo, it's very lean, as most people know, and you do not want to cook it, I think, past medium. I, I wouldn't cook it past medium rare, but um, <laughs> Ginger is really excited, sorry. <laughs> okay. um, so we don't want to cook this too much. So again, we have a tempered, um, so, oh, the roasty potato. She so thinks she's getting thing. some buffalo treats. Yeah, she's exactly what she thinks. Anything is what she's gonna get. She's gonna get <laughs> nothing like it. Okay, so oh. we have a beautiful roasty potato, and since I might make two full plates of these, because I think this needs to be made. <laughs> you know what? Please don't throw us away. <laughs> I feel bad eating in front of you guys, but please don't because. But it's delicious. your job. I know. Hmm. Okay. I think okay. I, I I always say I have the best job, so. Mm -hmm. 
All right, so the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna turn our pan back on the stove. Uh, we're gonna get that, I'm just using the same pan. I wiped it out after I had my pork in it. And I'm gonna put the, the steak in it. Um, I just wiped it out. Um, and then I have a little sheet tray and I'm gonna put these roasty potatoes in the oven. Um, this is Austrian German type of potato pancake. Usually it's with shredded potatoes. Um, we put a little mushrooms and manchego cheese down oh, the middle geez. of this. I was gonna say I can, really? I I can yeah. see a mushroom peeking yeah. so, out. So that's not necessarily manchego? classical, but it's delicious. <laughs> and actually my days with Wolfgang Puck, we used to do that. We used to make roasty potatoes and he was Austrian and um, Sometimes we put some surprises in the middle and I always really like that. Oh, I so love that. we want these to be really crispy. So I like to put them in the oven first. I have the oven at 400 and they can get kind of, I say scary crispy, like it can be dark golden. You don't want them burnt, but it can be as dark golden as they get. You know, you can have it that far so it's nice and crunchy because mm. you want it crunchy on the outside. Mm. So I put these in the oven first and then I start to, um, again, we have a huckleberry sauce here and so we just got some huckleberries from Washington State. Love uh, that's where we get our chanterelles and a couple of things that, you know, we have chanterelles in Colorado, but just not a lot. And we had no water this year. Yeah, I was gonna say, and the mushrooms the needed some water. Mm -hmm. So our mushroom season in Colorado isn't as great um, as normal. So we have this beautiful sauce um, and we have the huckleberries in there. You can again put it in the microwave or you could put it in a pot on the stove. I'm gonna have Tim just give it maybe a minute or 30 or whatever since we boiled that last one. <laughs> right. Since we got that last I'll, I'll one little hot. Very. I don't microwave much except for like a cup of tea Me and too. popcorn. So I don't really know how long stuff takes in a microwave. I have they, young kids. So they I vary. do a lot of 30, 45 seconds. Yeah. And you said two minutes, I went, oh. Oh, yeah, see, okay, yeah, that's a little long. Yeah. <laughs> they vary a lot though, right? I mean, size they do. all that stuff, it varies. So. Okay. My mom sets hers by the power levels, I don't know. Oh, yeah, that's, that's, that's getting very high tech. I'm like, add a minute, add a minute, <laughs> add a minute. <laughs> okay, so because I want that roasty to get hot, and I know how fast this is going to be, I think we should talk wine first. Okay, so nice. I'm just still so... I, I'm going uh, to rinse out my glass yeah, and get ready for this. So this excited really that you said this is your favorite of the whole lineup. That's it's just wine so cool. sexy. It's, it's really so sexy. sexy. So, Alo, Alo, Alo. Okay, so we're in the Mediterranean. We took a little bit of artistic license here and went quite far south in the Mediterranean. So if you're looking at a map of Spain, and we'll provide one for you with the, the stuff that you get to, to take home with you. This is on the southeast coast of Spain, not far from a town called Alicante. And the zone is named Yecla. So leaving the Mediterranean coast, we're going to pass through that coastal mountain range that holds Terra Alta, I mentioned before. These mountains go all the way from pretty much the Pyrenees, really, just inland from Barcelona through Terra Alta and then down and around through um, by Valencia, Alicante, and this region is called Yecla. Yecla sits up in the coastal mountains again, um, and this southeastern part of Spain is really a beautiful place for a grape called Monastrel. So this grape ripens on a really wide spectrum. And most of what we mm. see here in the US, most of the stuff mm. that might be more familiar names to you, comes from the next region inland called Humilla. And that's down on the valley floor because this grape has such great capacity for ripeness. Now Yecla we love because up in the coastal mountains you keep a little bit more acidity. The grape ripens, but you get more of those bright flavors. Mm -hmm. So uh, again, another wine that has a lot of kind of brambly berry fruit flavors, oh, some yeah. savory notes. Um, but the trick and the really special thing that makes this wine so unique is that Elo is harvested 30 days before right. any of the other wines, That's even in, keeps it lean. in Yecla. That's right. It keeps it lean, but you can taste yeah. it. certainly ripe, oh, but yeah. it hasn't become heavy yet. And it hasn't mm -hmm. um, so yeah, really right. picked up sort of that sweet mm -hmm. weight to exactly, it. Yeah. So uh, this is a style of wine that used to be quite popular. The locals would always harvest a little bit earlier and keep that as more of like For a themselves. fresh, easy drinking table wine right, and then yeah. let it get really ripe and kind of export it for the... My style. Yes, yeah. yes, yeah. for sure, Seriously. me too, me too. So awesome. So the winemaker here is a, a man called Alberto Orte and he is a a disciple of history, loves to research old traditions cool. and find out 
particularly if someone tells him, oh, we used to do that, but we don't do it so much anymore. He wants to figure out why and is it worth keeping and let's not lose oh, this that's tradition. So cool. And so he was walking through the vineyard with, um, with the property owner and uh, found this, this tiny little parcel. It's the highest altitude. It's pure um, limestone on Prephyloxera rootstock, which is a whole different thing we don't have time to go into now, but look it up, it's interesting. And uh, he said, wow, this fruit tastes ready. And the owner said, no, 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 we'll let it go for another month. And he thought, how can you possibly let it go for another month? It'll be too far, yeah, too, too, too ripe, far too ripe by then. It'll be raisins. And the, the property owner said, no, no, um, we, used to, we used to make an early harvest wine, but now we'll let this go. And so Alberto, um, I don't know how he convinced the, <laughs> the kind <laughs> vineyard owner, but he did. And um, now he gets to do this little experiment. So he brings in the fruit a month early but it's quite bracing and, and pretty aggressive at that point, even though sure. it is ripe. So it's um, ferment, it's, it's let to go for an entire month in contact with its skins, a nice long, slow fermentation. Then it spends time aging in cement, and then it spends time aging in oak, and then it spends time in the bottle before it's released. So 2014, this wine is harvested yeah. six years ago, mm -hmm. um, and that still just amazing. as fresh and bright as if it was made oh. yesterday. That amazes me that it's been sitting that long. It's it really delicious. does. And it doesn't overtake any of this because, especially with buffalo, and, and so, so lean, again, right? lean, lean. So you totally, see where I'm going yeah. here. So I love I'm gonna, that. I'm going to start this. I'm going to put a little bit of oil in my pan, and now Gabe and I have seasoned this buffalo, but at the end you have your um, Malden salt, and maybe we'll put a little Malden salt on the at the end. But I don't think you need to season it right now. Um, we've tried to make make it very simple for you guys to just do this. I love it as that so, guy has that little crunch too. Yeah, and actually this piece has a little fat on it. I'm going to put the fat side down and render that fat a little bit. Um, but you also do that in the oven too, so it doesn't, doesn't matter. So again, I'm going to put a little sear on it, but not a hard sear. That hard sear could dry it out. So that's where I would just caution you against a hard sear, but it might dry it out. So a gentle sear. Um, I might ask Gabe to go take care of Ginger, who my dog is causing a ruckus in the mudroom. I apologize, but <laughs> she's, so, she's irate right now that she's not getting any buffalo. I'm sure that um, at home, my dog would be doing the same thing. Anybody who has a dog, they would so be in the kitchen right underneath your feet. So I apologize, but hey, you're cooking in my house with me, so this is what you get. Oh, here they come. Um, here they go. It's okay. It's all right. They can come in. It's fine. Okay. Gabe, you leave them in. Let's we'll get some cookies. It's fine. Just give them a bunch of cookies. Ah. Okay. All right. So um, you have a little bit of chard and you have a bit of raw kale. Now this kale comes from Rebel Farms and this kale is grown in a hot house. Um, it's hydroponic, but it's still indoors. It's not, it's not in dirt. It's hydroponic and through water. And unlike other lacinato kale, which that's the variety this is, it's very delicate. So we're going to put this kale on fresh and then we're going to put, the, and we have chard that's been braised. So I'm going to turn this meat over, I'm going to put this in the oven, and when this is hot, just hot through, just like warm, because it's already cooked perfectly, I'm going to put the chard in the same pan. Uh -huh. I'm going to oh, use okay. that same pan with the yummy flavors, yep. Yep. just to rewarm that chard. So I'm just going to pop this in, and I'm going to take a look at our, our potatoes, and I'm going to give our potatoes a little flip, and on the bottom it's getting a little crunchier, oh, the sheet okay. tray is getting a little crunchier. And the potato and the oil. Yeah. <laughs> so, so this dish, again, like we did on the bee greens with the um, pork. <laughs> and you see what's going on back here. <laughs> We're going to put a little bit of the extra virgin olive oil on the kale and a little bit of the Malden salt. Um, and it doesn't necessarily need it if you want to just put it on raw. It's fine. So, so those, those of you that have children at home, yeah, this that is the are same like thing. Trying to figure out what's going on, it's the same thing. Jen's yeah. got her children here, her dogs. wild beasts. Yeah. We are six months uh, into a pandemic. Yes. Yeah, everybody's <laughs> seen more yeah. worse than this, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. and you know what? <laughs> just embrace it, right? Yeah. Just embrace it. I like it. It's made everything less like stuffy and formal. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. for people, <laughs> we have homes, we have. Yeah. Yeah. Creatures yeah. at home that don't cooperate. And, and this is real life, okay? <laughs> so there's no, like, you know, we're not editing this out. So this is real life. Okay, so the steak is getting warm. I have a little bit of olive oil and a little salt on my kale. 
And the idea was to give you a few textures of greens. Uh -huh. And that was just something because I think the green vegetable, when I'm putting together a plate Shake. of food, I have the, the meat on here, Shake. but the, the buffalo's a lean. The potato is fatty and rich. The greens are going to help cleanse the palate, and the raw greens even more cleanse the palate. Mm -hmm. Love that. And then I think this huckleberry sauce with the wine in it, it we didn't use this wine, God forbid. We used a nice red wine. I didn't cook with that beautiful wine. <laughs> so and something nice. Yes, something I nice. I think that is a huge compliment. Yes. <laughs> please don't ever, unless the bottle's been opened and maybe it's corked, don't cook with okay. this good wine, please. Can you cook with corked wine? No. no. I haven't if tried. It's old, don't like, if it's turned, you can cook with it. If it's opened and it's turned, just too old. But not not cork. Not cork. Okay, not thank cork. you. You don't yes, want to cook with anything cork. It smells like wet dog or cardboard. Your food will taste like cream. Wait a minute. Is that why I don't know? Because my house always <laughs> smells like wet dog. Is this why we don't know what happens? Because <laughs> I live with wet dog at all times. That's, <laughs> but they don't smell like cardboard. Okay, so good. Okay. <laughs> okay, okay. I solved the mystery. Okay. All right. So we are going to make this beautiful. Oh my god. All right. So, so good. this potato is sizzling. Mm. You can see how nice it is. And we are going to put this on the plate. My kids talk about a crunch meter. Yep. Oh, okay. crunch meter with the crunchy crunch foods. Meter. Oops. These potatoes would be on the crunch meter. Yeah. Oh, okay. And then they're actually going to put a bag of treats in there. That shelf right here. Oh my god, they're getting their, their whole feeding. She says this is working yeah. perfectly. Well, not the whole bag. I'm just saying. Okay, so the same thing. Uh, with the buffalo, let me move my glasses so you guys can see on the cutting board here. Um, I would give this buffalo a few slices. You don't have to slice it. If that intimidates you at home, you can put it right on the plate and it'll look beautiful. You know, it still look gorgeous. I like to show off the temperature. So maybe one or two slices. And, and that way, you want to slice it that way, right? Yeah. That way and nice against the grain. Yeah, and so we're just gonna set that, I'm just gonna set that here for now. I'm gonna set it here, and I forgot to do what I said I was gonna do. I'm gonna rewarm these greens in that pan. There's plenty of residual heat mm. in this pan, just to warm them. They've been cooked for you, so just warm, okay? And yes, so like Beth said, we're gonna slice this the way that the steak looks. It should be pretty obvious, and that's just warm through. Uh -huh. I, like, so I set perfect. that here while I'm waiting. Mm. Okay. The sous vide like, just cooks it all the way perfectly, right, Jen? You know, the idea okay. that we put it in this oven, so we put it in the oven at the exact temperature, and the probe only cooks it to that exact temperature. It's amazing. The outside of the oven never gets hotter. It's unreal. So unlike, you know, you put it in a 350 oven, you pull yeah, it at 120, the outside is still hot. You know, yeah. This is not going to do that. So I we're going to put wow. just a little bit of these greens on here. A little bit of these on here. We're going to put our beautiful Buffalo New York. Wow. Right here. And I am going to put a little bit of that Malden salt on here. Mm. Just a little bit. I think, you know, it's also a texture thing where the texture of the crunchy salt is really nice too. And most people like to put a little extra salt on their steak at home. Uh -huh. I think that's nice. Um, then I'm going to put our huckleberry sauce. I'll put a little on and a little around that plate. So some drips on, some drips like off. That's beautiful. And the huckleberry was also has a good amount of acid. So that's going to help. And then maybe a little fresh green, just a little bit on here. And the texture will be really nice. And wipe that little guy. And then that's ready for Tim to take a picture and us to enjoy. So, and, and again, who doesn't want a fancy hash brown? Roasty potato. <laughs> <laughs> who doesn't well, want a fancy just, hash brown? It justifies the lean buffalo, you mm -hmm. know, which is amazing. It wow. does. All right, so, oh my so one of these is for the kitchen, as we call it, <laughs> yeah. right here. And one of them is for you ladies. Both, did you? Oh gosh, no, she thought we were getting them both. Oh, we had hoped. But Matthew is behind the camera and he is like, how come I haven't got any snacks? Matthew over here. He's yes. keeping, we he's got a plate for <laughs> We got a cake plate for Matthew. He's been he's gonna be well taken care of. That's yeah. Amazing. Wow. Yeah. 
So these videos are so yeah. fun for us to do at home, and I wanted to say that it does take a lot of work, which is fun, but Matthew, our director of everything, he is our cameraman, and <laughs> our, amazing. And our, he's our director of everything. It's a great job title. Yeah. New title. Yeah. yeah. Well yeah. deserved. You now, well again, deserved. so again, Jen, when we get to it in Beth, this Evo Monastral, it's austerity, and that's the word I like for it, it's mm -hmm. austerity. I agree. Mm -hmm. I think the buffalo, but then how everything goes, I'm thinking this is going to be great. So you tell me, because you guys are the experts, and I'm gonna wipe my cutting board so we can get on to the next one. I just don't want to rush through that bite. Don't rush through it. Don't rush through it. That's the fun mm -hmm. part about these wine dinners is those berries. Mm-hmm. Those huckleberries are so they bring such a light to that dish. Do they? I'm gonna kind of burst yeah, right as I was mm -hmm. getting into the roasty potato. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> Don't worry, after, wait, after Tim and I take a bite, plate's coming your yeah. way. Yeah, it's coming your way too, Matthew. Yeah. Oh my so what do you guys think? I think this is really delicious. Okay. All right, I'm gonna try it and see what we think here. The wine Ooh, seems right. even more delicate by comparison with the, right. the huckleberry right. and the <laughs> beautiful potatoes with the manchego. Oh, and, crazy. Mm -hmm. and the buffalo is elegant. It's an mm -hmm. elegant piece of meat. It's mm -hmm. it's often this meat can be a little on the gamey side it can be a bit tough it can be dry depending on how you prepare it when i prepare it not when you prepare it <laughs> but this is really i think that the the sous vide keeps mm. it so tender mm -hmm. and delicate and it's um it's it's a match made in heaven and the huckleberry really the huckleberry's the huckleberry's great with it the huckleberries. the huckleberries blow me away with this dish like they're the star honestly right because they like brighten everything up so you just want more so one way I like to describe this wine to people is by talking about um, a baked berry pop. And so we're talking about huckleberries. That could oh, imagine it's a huckleberry pop. Is that you described it? Well, it's a way that I describe the grape monastrel because if you imagine the phases of baking a pie, mm -hmm. a berry pie, you've got the crust and you've got the juice from the berries, and mm -hmm. as it cooks, those juices will begin to bubble and cook out, so out, out of the edges. Right? And so an early harvest monastrel, it's just begun to sort of bubble around the crust, but it's still sticky. Mm -hmm. And then as you get more and more ripe, mm -hmm. you know, eventually by the time that crust goes, Certainly golden brown, and maybe sometimes okay. you forget it for an extra five minutes too long. Okay, okay. I know, but still. Yeah, yeah. and so <laughs> those berry juices have now gone dark, mm. and they've gone um, black and burnt around the, the outside mm. with the sugars, and so you can sort of scrape them off, and it'll stick oh. to your teeth. <laughs> yes, I love That's that. That's the Valley Floor ah. Monastrel. It's that right. Oh, I love that. But it's love the, that. the transition between that just barely starting to bubble and sticking to your teeth. That's the whole spectrum that Monastrel ripens on. Mm. That's so awesome. Awesome. My very, my really very sophisticated descriptions. My <laughs> yeah, you know, I think my know. is really versatile. So this is just barely bubbling up, right? It's just, it's yeah. still ripe and it's still tangy um, and it's warm and beautiful, but it hasn't gone to the char yet. That's, that's where the austerity and the delicacy stays here. All right. Well, and I hope everybody at home doing this appreciates this ELO. Um, mm, holy smokes. Again, on this dinner, so you know, a little behind the scenes chat in case it interests anybody home. You know, we figure out how to do this wine dinner and we say, okay, well, how much money can we spend on wine? And how much money can we spend on food? And this wine dinner, we liked, all oh, these wines Ooh. are too expensive. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, well, we're going like, to give this one away because we need to. Get the yeah. wines, seriously. Like, but they're so the good. Wines because you will enjoy these. Yeah. Yeah, by the fireplace or Yeah. Yeah, they're they're pretty delicious. This is another wine that'll be fine second day, third day if you can manage to not drink it all by then. Mine never lasts more than two days in my house. Come on, let's be serious here. Well, maybe that you can bring home so five good. bottles. That those. Isn't that delicious? Gabe's eyes are like this big. It's super fun. So yeah. So good, right? Wow. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Look at that. I was so distracted by the huckleberries, and then this appeared in front of me. That's uh -huh. pretty amazing. Poof. And then for this dinner, we are just keeping this wine for dessert. Mm -hmm. So this is um, not always. We sometimes pair a wine with dessert. Sometimes we go to sherry in mm -hmm. this instance. Um, Shows and the, the other thing that I thought I like to do sometimes is I like to come back to champagne. Uh -huh. no, is that something always, ever you yes. like to do? Because wow. so. 
we also might like try best some champagne with this. Um, oh yes. Because we thought we might come back to champagne. <laughs> Hold on, wait. I need champagne anytime. Okay. Of the day. <laughs> Her ears just yeah, perked right sorry. up. I just met yeah. champagne. Yeah, she is perked up. And I have a few flutes. Uh, if we want to just you yeah. know do something cute. And don't worry about flutes. So just a wine glass is great. Right. A wine glass is awesome. Don't even worry about flutes. Yeah. Seriously. We'll just do, yeah. Just yeah. Do, we'll just do this. Keep them in whatever. And by the way, don't get all stressed out about wine stemware and yeah. glassware and no. all that stuff. It's too easy. So, um, if you have done this, <laughs> uh, Matthew is, the dogs are, definitely want some buffalo from Matthew. Right? <laughs> <laughs> there, okay. Okay. Uh, who's okay. your bestie? Yeah. <laughs> who's your best okay, so for the dessert, and again, Corn, it is September in Colorado. I like the corn is fantastic right mm. now. And the summer we had and the heat we had, the mm. corn is delicious. Mm. So we really focus on the corn ravioli and the corn in the dessert. Oh. So this is a corn mm. Bavarian covered in chocolate mm. because we oh. are crazy what in a good way. We use Calvo dark chocolate. Okay. Um, I think it's like 74 whatever you know like 74 percent cocoa there's different levels of some things that we have this is a little bit bitter a little bit because the corn's sweet so mm -hmm. trying to balance so some components that you have here that we can talk about on the cutting board um you have your bomb and the bavarian is inside the chocolate's on the outside this is a cashew mousse uh, this is a cashew butter we have a little waffle cone crumble we have handmade caramel popcorn and a twill. So, you know what's been really fun about doing these dinners is we do these dinners and we end up loving the dishes so much we just put them on the <laughs> No, I mean, but Which that's the way to I go, right? Yeah. I mean, that's the way to go. So, okay, so what I'm gonna do to plate this, I'm gonna start off with the cashew butter and I'm gonna use one of my spoons and I'm just gonna put a little, whoop, a little cashew butter on the plate, okay? And then I'm going to simply take a spatula or your knife and put the bomb a little bit off center. Mm -hmm. Look at that. Okay. Same thing with these beautiful quenelles. Uh, we're going to put a quenelle right here. And we have some. So the idea of this was all the flavors in a sundae. So that's uh -huh. why the waffle cone crumble goes on here. Waffle cone crumble. And then we've caramelized this twill with our popcorn. Oh, that was awesome. <laughs> wow. So it's all about corn. Timmy, what do you think? Is it worthy of a picture, Timmy? I think I'm going to have to get it to, before you guys dig it. Yeah. <laughs> I gotta yeah. hurry. Find so, it off. <laughs> plating dessert, very simple. It's all made for you. And by the way, plate it however the heck you want. But this is what we suggest. And again, very important that you let this temper as well. Um, when you get the Bavarians on your to-go bag, they're going to be frozen and you put them in the fridge is great. You will notice also, just on a little minor point, that you'll have a bag that says dry, don't refrigerate, and uh, refrigerated things, most of it's refrigerated. But things like that twill and the caramel popcorn and the cone, you don't want to put those in the refrigerator by accident and they get soggy. So just a little... So you separated the them anyway. Yeah, we separate them in bags and say dry bag, like please put this in the store, you know, store in my restaurant. Please put this on your counter at home. In your dry storage closet. In your store room in your restaurant. In your dry storage closet, which we all love, have. And ladies, now so when you eat this, you just kind of cold, crack it, like a hot chill. You got this, no, you got this. It's like you need a little mallet. It's like you need a mallet. Yeah, it's like you need a mallet. It'll be great. And just give it a, just give it a Good up, girl. Kung Fu chop. Do you want to show me? Good up. Oh. Okay, just give it a chop open. <laughs> but you can see oh, wow. Wow. The, how the, the corn is inside. Beautiful. Super nice. So how do you prepare the inside? So oh, without giving away any secrets. No, Eric, my pastry chef, does mm. something similar where he juices the corn and he uh -huh. thickens it up. But then he puts it with a little sugar and gelatin. And he puts it in a bomb so mold. Good. So actually, we have these molds. Like magic shell. Yeah. Well, and he lines the molds with chocolate first, and he chills them. And then the next day, he puts the Bavarian in and chills that. And he has to freeze it to pop it out. Uh -huh. um, but again, you have this creamy corn custard now, mm -hmm. and a hard chocolate shell, and super fun. Anyways, it's just 
very much seasonal. Uh, and so soon at Rioja, because we, if corn's mm -hmm. not going to last forever, we're going to put on a butterscotch bomb mm. for this whole method. So mm. we just thought that'd be fun. So I think it's super fun. Yeah, and then it's so sweet. Yeah, and probably the champagne. It still tastes probably, like fresh corn. Right? Okay, let's just see. Let's just see. <laughs> no, I know, Chester's so good. He just wants mm. to help me keep my fork clean. And I love the cashew with it. Mm -hmm. I do too. The dark chocolate works really nicely with the monastery. Does it? Mm -hmm. Okay. A little bitter chocolate note. And, and the champagne, not bad either. The sweetness. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. As if you saved any, right? Yeah. I did, yeah, a little bit. All right. Well, everybody at home, wow. um, I hope you've had a fantastic time. We really appreciate you doing this. Um, mm -hmm. Looking forward to our next dinner, mm -hmm. which is going to be Rioja, our namesake, and Riviera del Duero. So there'll be oh. some really cool Tempranillos. I'm really excited about this dinner. Um, in this next dinner, you're going to see Tempranillo in so many different places in fashion. Mm -hmm. The same grape. I think it's going to be really fun. <coughs> um, and that's in October. I think 21st is our third, yeah, third Wednesday. Wednesday. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Whatever the third Wednesday is. So sure thank you so much. And thank you for putting up with my dogs. <laughs> and Chen, Beth, right. and Tim. And Super Matthew. Fun. Everybody. Cheers. 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 Always so great. Everybody, Cheers. thank Cheers. you so much. Be safe, be healthy. Thank, thank you. you for having fun. Take care.